Well, you came to the right place, kid. Did you open those shades? Thanks. Cleaning up the world. That's a pretty tall order. It's going to keep you plenty busy. Probably have to miss some school. Have you talked to your parents about this? They told me to start by cleaning up my room. They don't grasp the big picture. OK, OK, I like the challenge. Pollution. Let's get a scientific perspective on things here. You know, it seems that almost everywhere you find people, pollution is almost sure to follow. It can make our air poisonous, our water bad, and our land unfit to live on. It's harmful to the environment and to life on Earth, and there seems to be more of it each and every day. Hi, Richard. Hi, Catherine. Ready to go clean and green? Uh-huh, of course. The planet is a pretty big place. It's kind of hard to know when to start. Well, you know, we can't explain everything there is to know about pollution in one television show, but we can make a start. You see, pollution's found in three places. On land, in water, and in the air. One thing I always notice when I'm downtown is the air doesn't smell so good. I've always wondered, where does air pollution come from? Air pollution comes from chemicals. Smoke from chimneys and factories. It comes from smokestacks and from cars. Well, uh, question mark, air pollution is air contaminated in quantities harmful to the environment. Where does it come from? A variety of sources. Uh, they include industry, uh, fossil fuel combustion, which uh, we use to drive our cars and heat our homes and to uh, produce electricity, as well as there are some natural uh, causes, which would include volcanoes and forest fires. How do you measure air pollution? Well, question mark. Uh, air pollution is uh, measured a variety of means depending on what pollutant we're interested in measuring. Uh, one of the instruments we're looking at today is the sulfur dioxide analyzer. The way that uh, instrument works, uh, it continuously samples a uh, gas stream, and uh, there's a source of ultraviolet light within the instrument that irritates uh, the SO2 uh, molecules. And the instrument measures that degree of irritation and converts it into an electrical sing signal uh, which is related to a uh, concentration of uh, parts per million um, in, our, uh, in our sample. What are some of the harmful effects of air pollution? Well, question mark, some of the harmful effects include uh, damage to human health. Um, plants uh, can be damaged, a variety of uh, air pollutants. And if we look globally, we are aware of issues such as global warming and ozone layer depletion, which affect the world on a on a very wide scale. Thank you. Welcome. If you don't have a pollution monitoring system the way they do at the Environment Service, here's what you can do. For this experiment, you need some lids, like you get off food containers. Save the containers because you'll need them later. Exactly. Now, take some graph paper and cut some circles out and place them on the underside of the lid. Glue them down and then take some Vaseline and smear it on the graph paper. Put some labels on the lids to write down its date and location for later. Okay. Then once you're done, you take your pollution detection counter and place them in various locations near you. Now, you want to take my car or yours? Let's take your car, but I'll drive. Place them in different locations, like near your home, Local gas station. Wherever you think might be good. Keep your counters at least a meter above ground level. So after a week, take the lid, screw it onto a jar so it's covered, then return to home base. We had a good look at our particle counters under the magnifying glass. 
We counted the average number of particles in 10 squares of the graph paper in each slit. The ones near the gas station had nine particles. It's amazing to think we breathe in gases and particles every day. The question is, what can kids do?